Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 29, verses 1 through 11. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. This is another of the Psalms of David. And obviously, since the name since the name of the Lord is mentioned 18 times in these 11 verses, it's obvious that the focus of this psalm is on the Lord and his glory. This is a hymn of praise that David wrote after watching a thunderstorm. And it is just a powerful expression of how David is in awe of the majesty and glory of God that is on display in the power that is revealed in the thunder and in the lightning and in the rain and in the way the earth shakes. God rules over all things. And David takes a moment to observe a massive thunderstorm. And all he can think of saying is glory. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Ascribe means give credit to. Give, give glory where glory is due is what David is saying. And, you know, many people have said that God must be an egomaniac to want his people to glorify him all the time. And yet we give glory automatically to things that we think are beautiful and awesome and impressive. When you see a beautiful rainbow or the sight of mountain ranges or the sun rising over the ocean, there's something that just takes your breath away, doesn't it? And we automatically give glory to beautiful things. We give glory when we see a beautiful piece of artwork. We give glory when we hear a gorgeous piece of music that stirs our soul. We are born to give glory. And what David wants us to remember is that the God is the source of all the beauty and all the majesty and all the wonder in the world. And he is the one to whom glory is due. And so he talks about the thunder of the Lord's voice. The Lord's voice breaks the cedars. Cedars of Lebanon were like redwoods, massive trees, and the thunder of God snaps them in two. He says, Lebanon, the whole country, skips like a calf when the thunderstorm shakes the earth. The flames flash forth. This is a vivid description of the lightning that is piercing the earth as the thunderstorm rolls across the countryside. The the forests are stripped bare and the deers, the deer are frightened into giving birth all at once. And in his temple all cry glory. I tell you, there is something awesome and impressive about a good thunderstorm. I remember when I was much younger, elementary school, I was actually terrified of thunderstorms until one particular day, I uh, was probably in about third or fourth grade, and a storm was coming through, and I remember standing on the back porch of our house, and it was covered, and the rain was just pouring down, the thunder was shaking the house, lightning was popping everywhere, and all I wanted to do was go and hide under the bed. And my father came outside and stood behind me, and he put his arms around me, and he didn't say anything. And we just watched the storm together. And all of a sudden, my fear of thunderstorms was transformed into a love of thunderstorms as I just was overwhelmed at the glory that was on display there. And ever since then, I have really enjoyed a good thunderstorm.
I know not everybody feels that way. And of course, when a thunderstorm comes, you do need to make sure you're not in, at risk for being blasted by lightning. But the glory of God is on display in such a thing. And what we need to remember is even though we can't control the storm, we know the one who does. There's that account in the Gospels uh, when Jesus calmed a storm. Let me read to you from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? And what we need to hear in these words is that in the Greek, the words peace be still are not this calm, gentle peace be still. It's the way you talk to a dog when he jumps on the couch. Yeah, get down. Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves with absolute authority. He's the one who created the wind and the waves. They follow their master's voice. And the disciples are more afraid now of this man in the boat than they were of the storm. Who is this that the wind and the waves obey him? Remember when storms come into your life, that there is one who controls all the storms. And he is our Lord and he is our Savior. And he is the one who has absolute say over how long the storm will last and what it will do. Sometimes God turns the storm away from us, but sometimes he does not. And the promise is he is with us in the middle of every storm. And it is not always to the storm, but always to our hearts that he says, peace, be still. All will be well, no matter what storm is raging around you this day. And when you see one of the storms in nature, give glory to God, who is the one who is truly worthy of glory as the Lord of the universe. God's blessings be upon you this day.